Welcome back to the Mid-Year Mitch YouTube channel. I'm going to show you how I splice three wires together when I'm rewiring a car. So we're at the movies, huh? Yep, we're at the movies. A common thing you're going to run into when you're rewiring a car is you have one input wire that has your voltage and you have to split it between two other wires. So an example of this would be taillights back here. In this case, there's two taillights on each side of the car, so I'm going to need to split power from the one wire that comes back here for the brake light and then there's a second wire that comes back for the turn signal because I want both of these to operate as taillights and turn signals. That goes for this one over there as well. That goes for the license plate light. You have to splice that in. The low beam headlights and uh, the horn and gauge lights. There's a few other places on the car that you can use this. I got myself some of these Glark piggyback connectors. And here they are here. There's the three sizes. They come in the standard with any crimp connectors. And all you have to do is I got some of these other connectors. These other butt connectors that have the heat shrink built into them. And I used a male and female of those because the Glark connector is a standard female terminal with a male terminal that comes off of it. So you can snap two of them together if you get the male and the female. It's just that easy. You can crimp them just like you would any other connector and you're good to go. So you know the same rules apply when you strip the wires. You want to keep you don't want to have it too long, you don't want to have it too short, you want to make sure it fits nice and tight, etc. Um, one good thing to note is if this was my 12 volts coming in, I would want to face the connector in this direction. So I want the male end to be on this side. And it doesn't really matter which way this goes. Um, it just kind of makes the wire neater because whenever you crimp it, you get these both together, you heat shrink it, and you can pull this down and tape that together tight so these wires are nice and tight and then when you're done you can put a piece of heat shrink over if you want to make it uh, clean or you can use some tape and wrap it around. Now whenever I install these I like to put the heat shrink over this piece from about here to about to this edge that way it covers this terminal up that way it doesn't bump anything. See that each bulb has two wires one for the, the turn signal and running lights and one for the brake lights. So I ran the yellow and brown wire down and teed both of them off to each light. That way they both have the same function. And I taped, taped them up and then what I'm going to do is put some of this loom, which I have back here. This is the, the thicker stuff, but this just gives you an example. It's split down the middle and I have two more sizes. I have the smaller size that I'll use for this just to tidy this up to make it look nice. But this is a good clean way uh, to splice wires. So you can also splice wires by stripping them and wrapping them together um, and putting uh, electrical tape around that or soldering it. Um, I really don't want to do that because soldering it can get a little brittle and sometimes it can fail in a vibration uh, environment. Also I've seen people, which somebody did in this car, is to use wire nuts where they would put these three wires together and put a wire nut on it um, that will hold but it's mainly for a house that is a dry environment that won't vibrate. A car is an environment that, especially if it's in the engine compartment, will vibrate and it'll get moisture in it, especially if you drive it in the rain. So um, if the connection may not come loose, but it, the wires may corrode um, or um, you could start to lose your, your connection that way. So it's just not a good way to do it. So this, in my opinion, is one of the best ways that you can do this. It's easy, it's cheap. This kit wasn't that expensive and it came you can see how many pieces it came with. It came with a lot, and I already wired the car, and you can see I still have plenty left over. So this kit's gonna last you a while, and it was less than twenty dollars. I think it was like twelve bucks or something. So pretty cheap, 
and it works great. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out the rest of my videos that I have on the channel. I have other tech tips, and I have other restoration uh, videos for this car. I have a 63 split window. There's a little yellow 67 Camaro over there, too. So plenty of videos on classic cars to come, so be sure to stick around. I'll catch you guys later.